Brian Kelly, his first road game as the Irish head coach. Fourth quarter, we're locked up at 21. Dane Chris to Michael Floyd, Lou. Oh, just a great catch there by Michael Floyd. Also an outstanding pass, a great concentration. Chris threw for 369 and four touchdowns. Floyd caught two of them. Kirk Cousins of Michigan State rolling, looking. B.J. Cunningham, touchdown, tied at 28. But take another look, Mark. Cunningham go out of bounds? Yes, he did. Think he was forced out? No, he wasn't. Then this should not have counted. You cannot go out of bounds and be the first guy to come in and touch it. Referees apparently thinking Cunningham was forced out. We went to overtime. Notre Dame kicked the field goal. Sparty now looking at a third and five. Cousins. Oh, Darius Fleming gets him an eight-yard loss here on the edge of field goal range. But Antonio's going to try to tie it up and get it into double overtime. Now, keep an eye on the play clock here in the red. Zero. Delay of game, they didn't call it. Aaron Bates, it's trickeration. Charlie Gant, and on the banks of the old red cedar, there's a school that's known to all. His specialty was a trick play, and old Aaron Bates threw a good ball. The former high school quarterback from John Glenn High School of the Little Muskies in New Concord, Ohio. A moment for the ages. Michigan State does it, 34-31. D'Antonio, what guts? You know, we've got an inexperienced kicker, and uh, you know, there's a long kick. So we said, hey, let's go. By the way, the name of that play is Little Giants. Little Giants, indeed. What did Coach Kelly say? He just complimented you on the call. Well, he said gutsy call. Hadn't won west of the central time zone since 1987. Things did not go well early. Arizona already up 7-0. Hello, McNutt. Marvin can't hang on to the pass from Ricky Stanzi. Trevin Wade the other way. Terrific job by Trevin Wade. A smart play right here of watching the ball, taking it in for the score. There's nobody from Iowa even close to him on this play. Well, Stanzi, a little frustration. Iowa fell behind and their 27-14 game. And, oh, the punt goes off the helmet of William Wright, and Sean Prater is there to recover. So Iowa punting it away, and suddenly they've got it back. They've got great field position. They're in the red zone. Stanzi, again, hello, McNutt. This time, McNutt catches it. Originally called incomplete, but watch the footwork, Mayday. Get it. Got it down. Reverse the job. Let's reverse it, Iowa. 27-21. Less than a minute later, Broderick Benz picks six. Oh, this is big, because all of a sudden they had been down 27-7. Now they have a chance to take the lead. But they missed the extra point. Uh, but, you know, Nick Foles really kept his composure after the pick six. Drops one in. A rainbow to David Roberts. 38 yards. Foles then looking for right. Touchdown. 34-27. Two minutes to go. Out. Iowa at one point had a second and three, and Ricky Stanzi didn't handle these last few plays well, made it. He had opportunities to get rid of the ball, dump it off. You can't take sack after sack after sack in a situation. Ball game for Iowa. Two breeds of Tigers. Kyle Parker and Clemson got off to a great start. Clemson already up 10-0. What a catch, Lou, from Jamie Harper. Oh, this is a tremendous oh. effort. He's a running back, 230 pounds. And I tell you, he has a great... Ow. To lay out like that, ladies and gentlemen, the focus and the attention, boy, that's great. They say he's the best, the best hands on the team. Now, this play really turned fortunes for Kyle Parker. He took a helmet right in the back. He was in absolute agony, but this guy is also a terrific baseball player. Just stayed in the game, but so did Cam Newton. Complete bust by the Clemson secondary, Terrell Zachary. What a terrific job of throwing this football, showing the arm strength of Cameron Newton. He was hit on that play and just flicked it out there about 50 yards. Outstanding play for the Auburn offense. Auburn had come all the way back from 17 nothing down to take the lead, but Parker completes a third down pass. Xavier Die, drive alive. Andre Ellington. Game tied at 24. This game would be physical. Take a listen to this. The attrition in this game has been unbelievable. A lot of people headed for the cold tubs and the hot tubs after this one. In overtime, Auburn had kicked a field goal. This ought to be the winner. And Parker, maybe because of the injury, maybe he just missed him. But Jerron Brown was all by himself, and he made it too hard to catch. Devastation for Parker. But send a short field goal through. You go to double overtime. That's no problem. Chandler Canzaro puts it through. We're going to double overtime. It's good.
Oh, maybe, what, no, was it offsides or not? Oh, no, wait a minute. Let's huddle up. Let's make sure we get this call right. Is the Auburn faithful? Watch closely. Look at the center. That's an illegal snap. Properly called by the official. So Clemson now back up five. You got to kick it again from 31. You know what's going to happen. <laughs> Auburn pulls it out. 27-24 by Georgia on Saturday. Ryan Mallett. Got the arm to throw it back across the field, Mark. Ronnie Wingo. Terrific footwork. And look at Ronnie Wingo down the sidelines. Wide open. Easy touchdown for Arkansas. Hey, wait. Mark Rick having a little prayer meeting with the dogs. And they were down 24-10 in the fourth quarter. And apparently it worked. First and 10, Aaron Murray to Chris Durham, Lou. Well, this is just a tremendous throw here. And what a fine, fine catch. Good focus, concentration. Big play, turn to momentum. Now third and goal from the 10, Tavares King had a very good game. Just would not be denied. Touchdown dogs, 24-17. Murray again. Durham again. A terrific job by Durham of focusing on the football, hauling it in, protecting it for the first down for the Bulldogs. Remember when Sean Ely had that big fumble last week against South Carolina? Not this time, tied at 24. 104 to go, Jake Beckett coming and a ferocious knock the war bonnet right off of Murray. The Arkansas defense getting a stop. Mallet's only got 47 seconds. I mean, they're, they're just going to, you know, well, maybe they won't. Mallet, DJ Williams, and now you pick up the first down. You get close to midfield. Now you just have, you know, you just got to get in field goal range. That's enough, right? Williams again, Lou. Uh, just a little quick out there. Man coverage, and now Georgia's going to change up their coverage and play two deep, five short. Well, I thought they were going for overtime. Childs, please. <laughs> Childs, please. Greg Childs, 40 yards. Mallet gets him in the end zone, but Brown's not done. Showing off some arm strength. He lets this thing go about 67, 68 yards, and Georgia had a shot at it. But Arkansas hangs on 31 to 24. Mallet getting his first row. Tied at 10 in the third quarter, fourth and six from the Gators, and they're in their own end, and Urban Lou dials up a fake punt with Omarius Hines. Well, all the momentum was going towards Tennessee, and he felt it would work, and he made a good choice. Now, take a look at this, uh, Coach, and tell us why it worked so well. Well, here is going to be, it goes directly to the tailback. It's a run all the way. Now, Tennessee has a chance to make the tackle, which would have deprived them of a first and 10, but that gave the momentum to Florida. The Gators on a third and goal, same drive. John Brantley, Frankie Hammond, seven yard touchdown, Florida 17 10. It's 24 10. Ball's trying to stay in it. Matt Sims going to throw it up and find a wide open Justin Hunter. Tennessee 24 17. The deficit just seven, but Trey Burton comes in in the wild Tebow mayday. It's the wild Gator. Tebow's gone. He's still there in spirit. He's never totally gone. Trey Burton running that wild. Gator, whatever, Wildcat, Wild Tebow. This is a touchdown that took care of business. 31-17. Just three and three in Lubbock. Tommy Tuberville's birthday. He never lost on his birthday. Garrett Gilbert already up 14-0, and the Red Raiders get back in it. A tip pick. Jarvis Phillips. 85 and he houses it. Terrific job by Jarvis Phillips getting the ball and taking it in the end zone because it's easily been tackled, but runs through the tackers and takes it into the score. All of a sudden, the Raiders back in it. They have it tied at 14. Taylor Potts. And look who jumps the route, Lou. It's Curtis Brown, who is covering Michael Crabtree on that play two years ago. Oh, this is great redemption. But I want to say, this is not the same Texas Tech offense I'm used to watching for the last six, seven years. They were held to 144 yards, first time since 1990. They've been under 150. Fourth quarter, Gilbert throws it incomplete to Greg Smith, Will Ford flag for taunting. Penalty would give Texas a first down and then on third and goal. Mark, this is the 23rd play of an 80 yard drive that ate up over nine minutes. Horns win it 24 to 14. Wake Forest and Stanford. ACC struggled in non-conference play. Didn't get any better against Harbaugh's bunch. First quarter tied at seven. Andrew Luck going for Chris Owusu. Terrific pass protection. No one even gets close, but look at the air he puts under the ball just so the receiver can get it over the defender. What a great play for Stanford. 21-7 when Luck hits Uswa Umanum with a 12-yarder. And watch what happens here. Here comes the corner blitz. Luck sees it immediately, Lou. He sees it immediately. This makes a perfect throw. 
Extra point was no good. Not much else went wrong for Luck. His third touchdown pass. And he's got wheels, too. You don't coach this. You just say, go do it. What tremendous peripheral vision, and what a great athlete. Look at the speed he has. Stanford wearing those all-black uniforms, and he smashed Wake Forest in a complete blowout. Houston and UCLA, the Cougars were ranked. Kevin Sumlin's team, you know, Case Keenum had, had a concussion-like symptoms and just been cleared late in the week to play, but Jonathan Franklin shows up at these guys in the baby blue uniforms look nothing like what we'd seen earlier in the year. Keenum's pass is picked off by Akeem Ayers. We see Keenum trying to run him down. He would go down in a heap. Ashley looked at his leg after this. He's helped off the field and parted to the locker room. New Heisel's bunch just really easily played its best game of the year as you watch the star quarterback for the Cougars go down in a heap. 31 to 13, UCLA gets its first victory of the season. Lane Kiffin and the Trojans in the gopher hole to take on Minnesota. Adam Weber would find Dejon McKnight down the left sideline, made it. And a nice throw by Adam Weber here, but even a better catch with a defender all over him, he still hauls it in for the score. Gophers up by one because USC had done some weird thing and tried to go for two earlier. But on the ensuing kickoff, there goes Robert Woods. How many safeties do we see? Well, we only see one safety, and that's not enough. But what a shame. Minnesota just take the lead 14-13 when they run it back for a touchdown. Robert Woods, 97 yards. 19-14, now 26-14 when Allen Bradford's off and running. Now that's running downhill. No one touched him on this play. 56 yards for the score. Terrific execution by the offense. Minnesota got a late touchdown that was important to Bucky had won 26 non-conference, 26 straight non-conference regular season games. Wisconsin up 3-0 to kick off. Omar Bolden's going to find the hole. Kicker's got to get his hips down, get in good tackling position, Lou. Either that or he's got to chase him faster. <laughs> 97 yards. Sun Devils take a 7-3 lead. Second quarter, Wisconsin had just taken a 13-10 lead. Uh, the kickoff return play is working well, Mark. Well, they have to do a better job of setting that, but keep an eye on Shelton Johnson right here. Number 24, he's not going to give up on the play. Makes the tackle inside the five. And look how important it was because time expired in the first half. No points. Now, John Clay, 19 yards. Wisconsin up 20 to 13. Clay had a buck 23 for the reigning Big Ten Offensive Player of the Year from last year, fourth quarter. Here come the Sun Devils. Stephen Three, who led a comeback against Wisconsin before when he played at Michigan, to Cameron Marshall. Next place, first and goal. Marshall, give him six. You know why? You know why we show extra points, guys? Why? When something goes wrong, and it did. Blocked by the senior Jay Valai, laying out, sacrificing his body, and Bielema and the Badgers stay undefeated by the hair of their chinny chin chin, 20 to 19. Air Force and Oklahoma. Air Force leads the nation in rushing. Landry Jones coming off a spectacular performance against Florida State. And Lou DeMarco Murray's been great all year. Oh, he has played tremendous this year. DeMarco's third touchdown of the game. Oklahoma seemingly in control, 27-10. But Air Force, you know Air Force isn't going away. Jared, two for six. Two for six. Air Force cuts it to ten. And then the option's perfect. Kyle Halderman takes it, Mayday. Terrific job of cut blocks on the outside. Halderman takes it in for the score. Nice execution on that play by Air Force on the outside. Three-point game. 2.46 to go. Third and four. Air Force trying to get it back. Jones will have none of it. Kenny Stills, first down. Jones through for 254. Oklahoma wins by three. Nebraska and Washington. It will be a Big Ten, Pac-10 matchup someday. Jake Locker. Jake's going to have a lot of great days, Saturdays and Sundays in the NFL, but this is when he'd like to erase from the hard drive. His first possession picked off by Eric Haggett would set up a Nebraska touchdown. But Mark Taylor Martinez is making a name for himself as a running quarterback. It seems he does this every week. When he gets the ball and pulls it down and runs with it, he's going to be off to the races. Another 80-yard touchdown run by Taylor Martinez. He led the nation in rushes of 40 yards or longer coming in, turns in another one. Huskers up big, 35-21. Roy Hallou Jr., hello, goodbye. The reason this works is because Taylor Martinez carries out the fate. It's a two-pronged attack, very difficult to stop. Good night, good luck. 50 top 25 team in the FCS. Mitch Rodriguez at 110,000, all excited. Second quarter, 
Mark, keep it on the right guard, Josh Samuda here. There's a terrific job of pulling around and getting the block and knocking the defender down, allowing Jonathan Hernandez to take it in for the touchdown. With less than a minute and a half to go in the first half, it's 17-7 UMass, but then Denard Robinson hits Daryl Stoner. Well, he does a nice job. It shows his speed here. Goes all the way to pull Michigan back to within three points. Yeah, it'd be good to go to halftime down three after falling behind by 10, but it could be better. Less than a minute to go. John Griffin is loose, and then so's the football, courtesy of Jordan Kovacs. Kovacs rips the thing away. And UMass losing some of that momentum when you do not keep that football riveted to your rib cage. And on the ensuing drive, Robinson just stole him again, Mark. A nice job of Bernard Robinson standing tall in the pocket. He knows exactly where he wants to go to the football and fires a strike. He threw for 241 and two touchdowns. Third quarter, Michael Shaw. Rips off a 34-yarder, his second touchdown of the game. 28-17, Mays and Blue in control. So it seemed, it especially seemed that way when Robinson takes it himself. Touchdown, 104 on the ground for Shoelace. 35-17, Michigan rolling. But all of a sudden, a little mishap in the special teams. Minutemen ready at a minute's notice to get right back into the game. Punt blocked, Scott Duggan gets it. Great field possession, and Kyle Heavens finds Andrew Krevis. Oh, just all alone out there. How can anybody be that alone? They come back from 35-17 to 42-37. They try the onside kick, and Michigan's able to hang on. State team since 1921. Devere Posey going against his brother Julian. Julian, the defensive back for the Bobcats. Terrell Pryor's going to find Devere for 35. Jim Tressel had told Devere Posey, if your big brother shuts you out, it's going to be a long lifetime for you. Uh, DeVere didn't have a you know, stellar day. It was five catches, 62 yards. Pryor completed 16 passes in a row at one point. He still can run it as well. Buckeyes go on to win it 43-7. to seven. Penn State shutting out Kent State 24 to nothing. Robert Bolden running for a touchdown for the first time in his career. He did throw a couple more interceptions. Still not really getting uh, all the running backs going in the real positive direction just yet, but the Nittany Lions stout on defense against the Golden Flashes. Louisville and Oregon State. Oregon State at home before going to Boise State next week. Quiz Rogers, here he goes, Mark. You can't stop Quiz Rogers. Look at the speed here, and look at the way he just runs through the defender into the score. 132 yards, couple of touchdowns. Louisville, Louisville had a real chance in this game. They fought hard under Charlie Strong. Adam Froman picked off by James Dockery. Beavers win it 35-28. They go to Boise. Jordan Jefferson trying to get the Hats offense on track. Mississippi State's offense kept throwing the ball to LSU, but this is a remarkable interception by Patrick Peterson. Nice job of concentration, watching the football, going up and tipping it, that old tip drill, and then making something happen after the interception. LSU intercepted five Bulldog passes. Third quarter, Bayou Bengals have been kicking a lot of field goals before Jordan Jefferson keeps it himself. LSU pulls away 29-7. South Carolina getting tuned up for Auburn. They beat up on Furman. Marcus Lattimore, late drive for the Mountaineers against Marshall. Lou, he looked razor sharp finding Tavon Austin here. Oh, he really did. He's just getting better and better the more experience he gets. Going to find Austin again. What is it you like about him as a quarterback coach? Well, I, he has great vision and he has great poise in there. Now, he, what he really likes is the way Maryland defended that pass. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly helps. I like his great pass protection approach because he can sit back there and just fire away down the field against the defender. He's got a quick release and notice that the ball spirals so it's easy to catch. He'll find Stedman Bailey for the second straight time. West Virginia built a 28-0 lead. They would win it 31-17 behind the four touchdown passes from Smith. East Carolina and Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech still looking for its first win of the season, and East Carolina jumped out 17-7, but Tech had rallied. They've got a 35-27 lead. Dominique Davis picked off by Rashad Carmichael, and Old Rock's going to take it back 68 yards. Hokey, hokey, hokey high. Tech, Tech, VPI up 42-27, to and just to tack a little more on, Tyrod Taylor would find Jarrett Boykin. Boykin would... Play action pass. Nice job by Boykin to finish the playoff. 69 yards, 49 to 27. 
Tech gets its first win of the season.